Simulanka is amazing. Not only give us a wonderful story, but also provide us with a lot of interesting setups. In fact, it may even reveal the true hidden lore that connects to the Abyss Order project, Fatui, or perhaps the very foundation of Teyvat. All by simply looking at the place and the name itself, Simu Lanka. At the first glance, the name Simu Lanka feels like the word simulation. And to be honest, it is a very good catch. Because in fact, Simu Lanka is most likely referencing the word Simulacra, a plural version of the word simulacrum, which has a similar association of meaning. So, what is this simulacrum? After searching on the internet, there are various takes on this word, or rather, this particular concept. Yes, you heard it, simulacrum is a concept. This word is derived from the Latin word simulacrum which means likeness or image, and from the word simulare means to pretend or imitate. From that alone, we already can guess what this concept is about. It is an imitation of the real thing like a statue of a person, or a painting of the fruits. Initially, this view considered the imitation to be merely an abstract form that attached to the real world. Interestingly, this concept has undergone several evolutions due to the progression of technology and human understanding about reality. One of the well-known perspectives that take this concept further comes from the book Simurakura and Simulation by Jean Baudrillard. In that book, he delivers these two statements, which encompass the idea of original loss and truth replace. He also proposed four stage of simulacrum, and to make things easier, let use an analogy. Imagine you have a cat at home. One day, you draw a picture of the cat that looks exactly like it, with all the same colors and shapes. Your drawing is what we call Fatful copy, the first stage. Now, let's draw again, but this time, you exaggerate some features, like making the eyes super big and the tail really long. The result is still the drawing of your cat, but a little bit distorted, isn't it? This is what we call perversion of reality, the second stage. Then, suddenly, you have another idea. This time, you draw a cartoon version where you change the full color, add more tails, or even give it, it a costume and superpower. From here, the drawing start to not represent your actual real cat. It is more about your imagination of the cat. This is the third stage, pretense of a copy. Interestingly, you don't stop there. You keep changing more stuff and even mixing it with other animals. In the end, the final product doesn't resemble any cat at all, but you still label it as a cat. And this is the last stage of simulacrum, the pure simulacrum. So with all of that, simulacrum can be understood as a process and an effort to create a new reality with their own truth based on existing reality. If we put it into Genshin context, in this case Simulanka, then it is actually a copy of something else, which is Teyvat, to a certain degree of course. This has been supported during Simulanka quest, namely Anders daughter who wants to make a better ending for Jurin by creating this storybook, and Mona saying that the way the constellation works here, made by Barbelov, is a copy of Teyvat constellation. Despite it being a copy, Simulanka eventually managed to separate from Teyvat. Essentially, to a certain extent, it becomes an independent reality, where Durin has a happy ending. You see, the very concept of Simulacrum that we previously discussed being a pattern in this patch. But you might ask, well, okay, surely this has something to do with Teyvat or Genshin story in general. As I promised, it has indeed. There are two things that we have established. One, Simulanka is a copy of certain part of Teyvat. And two, it is an independent reality, which at the same time allows the resident to jump into Teyvat. From here, you could already imagine where we are going to. The most obvious one is that 
almost everything in Simulanka, including the narrative, is a reflection of Teyvart properties, such as the story of the hero and its companion, the three goddesses, the consolation, the misjudgment of the dragon, and many more. I believe many of you already know that. But personally, the biggest thing that surprised me is the fact that it is an independent reality. Because with that alone, it opens the possibility that there is a way to escape Teyvart prison and destiny. And if we take it even further, perhaps this could be what the Loom of Fate project is aiming for. By copying Teyvart properties and modifying it to the point where it becomes its own reality and truth. Basically, creating or weaving a new world. That sounds oddly familiar, doesn't it? Although it sounds promising, I found it somewhat challenging. Like, how to do it? In what way do they achieve it? To overcome that challenge, we need to look at how Simulanka was created. However, the quest doesn't mention how Anya did that. Luckily, intentionally or not, the dev has provided the answer for it. It is from the Imaginarium Theater quest, one patch before 4.8. What a coincidence. So, what is it? It is a statement from Wolfie. From that statement, we found that there are four points that might be the key to know how Simulanka was created. They are Fantasy Truth, True Fantasy, Power of Creation, and the Mysterious Ink. To understand it, imagine building a castle. Fantasy Truth is like the individual bricks, the building blocks, and each block is a made up or inspired rule and fact. For example, one block may say dragons can breathe fire, or the next block state magic exists, etc. Those are the pillars that will shape the entire building. To create and set these bricks, it requires a certain degree of creativity, or consciousness, or beingness, something that can prompt to move, a special tool and skill, and a unique material. When all the bricks come together, it will create a complete castle, a true fantasy. Essentially, a new world with its own rules and truth. Now, if we apply this into the loom of Fate Project and Fatui's plan, we will find some interesting insight. In order to create a new world or weaving the branch of destiny, they need something that is equivalent to the creation of Simulanka. And I think they sort of already did that. At least some of the previous points. The wheel has been gathered by the Fatui through Genosis. The Abyss Order with the Loom of Fate can be seen as a tool. Plus, both parties could potentially have developed a certain level of alchemy. The only thing left is to find the right material, agree on what rules and facts that need to be placed, and then put them all together. The end. It's easy. That's what I initially thought. Aside from whether or not both parties will come together, I think there is more to it. In fact, it might go deeper. And I have summarized them into four points. Allow me to explain it. Number one. I feel like there is a connection between fantasy truth with memory and names. Because, as we all know, memory and names are one of the core themes that Genshin Impact use to shape the identity of something, including living beings like humans, and even has the power to influence the course of history and reality, which tie back to fact and truth. So, since fantasy truth is about fact and truth, whatever happens to memory and names will be so crucial for the project. This reminds me of Dotore's action to the Inmin Sutri, or the Abyss influence to corrupt the fabric of Teyvat, and Traveler's role as a memory keeper. I wonder how everything will play things out, especially where in Netland, they seem to start delving deeper about ancient name. Do you have any idea? Number 2. The Mysterious Ink Although I am the one who proposed the idea, I personally still don't know exactly what it might be referring to. There are plenty of possibilities here. It could be the combination of the abyss and celestial material, 
or perhaps it has something to do with the seven elementary energy, like hypothesis, or could take a form of prima materia, the magnum opus, which somewhat similar to the fourth stage of simulacrum. Or silly enough, it might potentially be just paimon, you know, emergency food equals special urgent material. There is also part of me that keeps suggesting that, hey, how about Genesis 4? It could be that. But for now, I have no idea. Number 3. After finishing the Simulanka quest and finding out all this idea, I am even more curious about what the heck Hexen Zircle Wall really is. If Hexen Zircle members have great knowledge and power, like creating new world from books, why don't they help the people of Teva break free from celestial control? Is something preventing them? Or maybe there is more information we don't know yet? Or could it be that Hexen Zircle has already broken free from Celestia? That's why they are always depicted as teacups, but they can only guide certain individuals instead of taking direct action. As a Hexen Zircle lover myself, this question still bugging me every night. Last but not least, number 4. If Simulanka is a copy of Teyvat, who's to say Teyvat isn't either? What if Teyvat is merely a storybook on the verge of Simulacrum stage, and at the end, we will reach and visit the world beyond? However, Teyvat seems to be more complicated case than Simulanka, because it could tie to the idea of consensus and hyper-reality, which means Teyvat isn't just in simulacrum stage, but also a shared reality, shaped by what everyone believes and experience. This makes Teyvat a place where what is real and what is imagined blend together, and the cycle or samsara might help keep everything feeling consistent. And there you have it my primary thought about Simulanka and its potential lore and connection. Simulanka Quest is really pushing my theory-making factory to the edge. And also, this is not all things they presented. I just cover one main topic, the name or the concept of Simulanka. There are tons of mirroring here, like three goddesses, etc. You know what I mean. So what do you think? If you have a super cool idea or perhaps additional information, put it in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching, like and subscribe, Hello Zen here, and see you next time.